Compensation demanded by family of man fatally shot by police stray bullet during protest in Niger State. NDLEA NAPS incendiary drug supplier seizes 7.6 tons of illicit substances. Gender disparity limits potential of women farmers in rural communities. On the foreign scene, Al Shabaab takes responsibility for attack on UAE military in Somalia. Hello and welcome to the Trust TV News Update. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us. The family of Aminu Ahmadu, a scrap parts dealer killed by a stray bullet during a protest in Mina, Niger State, is demanding compensation from the Niger State government and police authorities. The protest, organized by residents over hardship and rising living costs, turned violent when police attempted to disperse the crowd with gunshots and tear gas. Aminu was fatally struck by a stray bullet and despite his family's efforts to seek medical help, they were unable to due to the heavy police presence. His younger brother, Sani Ahmadu, described Aminu as a pillar of the family. The Niger State Police Command stated that they used minimum force to disperse violent protesters who attacked them with dangerous weapons. Meanwhile, the Niger State Government has apologized for the arrest of protesters and ordered their release from police custody. Residents of Imo State have blamed the security challenges bedeviling the state on bad governance, unemployment and economic hardship, among others. The residents who described, who decried the situation said if such challenges are not addressed, the fight against insecurity will only be an effort in futility. Trustee Vers Ajibade, our official, tells us more. A cross-section of the residents who spoke to Trust TV posited that the current hardship in the country is a major factor contributing to the security challenges affecting the nation. Beyond the deployment of security personnel to combat criminal elements, the people are saying that the government should, as a matter of necessity, prefer solution to the lingering unemployment and economic hardship. jobs. Possible companies and uh, factories where these younger ones will be engaged. Because when a young guy is busy doing something, the tendency of taking evil will not be there. Insecurity starts from the stomach. When someone does not have something to eat, he begins to think on how to pick up. You understand? On how to go to somebody's farm and steal, on how to go to some to pickpockets. Others who spoke blamed political leaders whose activities they said aids and abates insecurity. I would say that it's because of our leaders. They are the cause of insecurity. They are using it as a political fight and all that. They know what they are doing. Insecurity, I can say, is not properly managed. This, the challenges of insecurity has not been really properly managed by the government. The police, on their part, have continued to interface with stakeholders in the state with a view to eradicate insecurity. The Commissioner of Police, Danjuma Aboki, says the command under his watch will not relent in their efforts to crush all criminal elements. Meanwhile, some stakeholders say the bad roads in some of the communities are equally a contributory factor to insecurity. Now we have meeting between the host community, the Fulani community, the Hausa community, the Yoruba community, the university communities too, to all how we are going to solve the, the, the security challenges. It was a fruitful discussion and by his grace we are going to flush out all the criminal elements in this community. The problem here is the road. And we want to appeal to His Excellency, our governor, to quickly expedite action to complete this road. That alone can reduce security threats to either by about 50 percent while the rest can be handled by both the commissioner and the synergy is, is trying to, uh, to, to gather within the, the communities. And we are going to give you all our support individually and collectively. 
While residents await favorable outcome of the situation, they are hopeful that government at all levels will approach the matter with a clearer and better understanding in order to bring lasting solution to the menace. Ajiba de praise. Trust TV News. Owere. Legosians have joined the number of states where there have been protests against high cost of living in the country. In Lagos, market women and youth protested in the Ibeju Leki area of Lagos State on Saturday. They carried placards with the inscriptions such as Baba Tinubu, Nigerians are hungry, and Tinubu, come and rescue us, among others. The protest is the latest in the series of protests which had been held in Kogi, Oshu, Niger and Kano states over the rising cost of living in the country. Since the removal of the petrol subsidy in May 2023, prices of commodities in the country have been going up. The Kano State Hizba Board has seized 8,600 bottles of beer from a van traveling from Kaduna to Kano. According to Idris Ibrahim, the board's officer in charge of intoxicants, the alcoholic drinks were confiscated last Thursday at Kwenawar Dangoro village in, along Kano Kaduna Expressway. Meanwhile, the board also arrested 15 young women accused of engaging in prostitution in various parts of Kano city. Deputy Commander General Mujahid Aminuddin confirmed the arrests, noting that some of the suspects had been previously apprehended and charged to court for the same offence. Aminuddin highlighted concerns about drug abuse among the arrested individuals, affecting their appearance and mental stability. Meanwhile, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has apprehended a 42-year-old man allegedly transporting concealed opioid pills to an insurgent's enclave in the Banki area of Baranu State. NDLEA spokesperson Femi Baba Femi disclosed that this operation was part of a broader crackdown on drug trafficking, resulting in the seizure of over 7,609 kilograms of assorted illicit drugs across eight states. In one significant operation in Nasara State, NDLEA operatives intercepted a truck transporting 367 jumbo bags of cannabis sativa weighing 4,037 kilograms from Akure, Ondo State, to be delivered at Shabu area of Lafia, the state capital. Three suspects were arrested in connection with the seizure. In another operation in Abuja, NDLA officials arrested Jibrin Shuaibu, 23, and Prosper Ine, 17, with 169 bags and 80 blocks of compressed cannabis sativa weighing 1,961.5 kilograms, concealed in a truck. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, retired, commended the efforts of various NDLEA commands across the country and urged them to continue surpassing past feats in their efforts to combat drug supply and demand reduction. This side, this side, this side. Who is there? Collect. Okay. I'll let the foot of change and wait. Wait. Come, wait there. Wait there. Wait there. Oh, yeah, I'll have a little. In rural communities, gender disparities persist, hindering the potential of women farmers who encounter various challenges. Rahima Dokaji in this report sheds light on the plight of two women in Kanu who are local farmers facing significant obstacles despite their commitment to the industry. Their struggles include limited access to government interventions and a lack of transparency in agricultural support systems. Government interventions such as the Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme Fund ACGSF, Agricultural Credit Support Scheme ACSS, Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme CACS and Anka Borrowers Program, among others, aim to facilitate lending to farmers. According to data from the CBN, the ACGSF has facilitated more than 100 million loans valued at more than 122 billion to farmers across the country. 
since its inception until March 2021. However, this progress often falls short of reaching women farmers, leading to a gender disparity in accessing vital support. Farmers like Hajia Hawaya Dokwari Audukofar Ariwa express their frustrations when accessing such interventions, shedding light on the flood distribution system and the additional costs imposed on farmers, recounting a seminar where women farmers were overlooked. Not long ago, we received a so-called free relief intervention, but we paid 17,800 naira at a POS machine at the place of distribution. And after we collected it, we were asked to pay an additional 600 naira to the people who unloaded the intervention products. We were given two sacks of fertilizer and three bottles of pesticide. This is the intervention we received directly from the government, and it is not for women only. Men were also given. Kama Hatima Yadokwari, the secretary of the Sodo Farmers Association of Yadokwari, experienced farmer emphasizes the lack of government intervention for women farmers, despite their active involvement in local agricultural organizations, stressing the need for equal opportunities and support to thrive in the sector. I remember attending a seminar organized for all Garimala local government farmers. The chairman of our local government, the ward head, and other stakeholders were present. During the seminar, they lamented the lack of women farmers organizations in the local government. I stood up and explained that we did have organizations and showed them our register. However, at the end of the seminar, only the men received tractors, pesticide machines, watering machines, fertilizers, and everything else. We, the women, were given nothing. To me, it seems like a result of godfatherism, as the government is aware of our presence during elections when they promise to improve the lives of women and children. Yet, this is the reality of what's happening. She also highlighted instances where women were marginalized and overlooked when it came to receiving interventions within the community. We often feel left out and unnoticed when it comes to receiving any kind of assistance. It seems like they are not aware of our existence. If any help is provided, it's usually only given to men and they keep it to themselves. We are excluded from everything, including workshops, seminars and training sessions. We have no information about when these activities take place. We always hope that our turn will come, but it seems like it's not happening anytime soon. Additionally, when it comes to government support, we have never received any financial assistance or family relief programs. We have never ever received a small amount of fertilizer. This is the reality of our situation. The stories shared by Hama Hatima and Hajiya Hawa shed light on the urgent need for gender equality and fair opportunities for women farmers. By providing them with equal access to resources and support, their potential and drive sustainable development in Nigeria's agricultural sector can be unlocked. Rehima Shewudwakaji. Intending pilgrims for 2024 Hajj from Washington State have been charged to imbibe acceptable conducts that will enable them achieve a rewarding Hajj exercise. They received the charge during an interactive session with the Washington State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board. Hamido Yekwade files the report. The trust of the interactive session between the intending pilgrims from Oshun State and members of the Oshun State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board centered on ensuring acceptable conduct before and during the Hajj operation. The intending pilgrims said the pilgrimage to the Holy Land would afford them the opportunity to worship Allah and pray for their families, Oshun State and Nigeria. We thank God for this opportunity. We are praying for Hajj to worship Allah and pray for our children, our religions, our states and our country. We also appreciate the efforts of our governor for making the Hajj operation smooth. We appreciate him. May God help him. The preparation so far starts from uh, having to see that the old money is paid in full as directed by the board. Secondly, keep oneself in the right frame of mind as to the fact that uh, what we are going there to do is for the purpose of serving the Almighty Allah, nothing more. The chairman of the Oshun State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, Maruf Ishola, advised the intending pilgrims to refrain from any act capable of violating their age rights. The agile operation links sacrifice, everything based on sacrifice. We are going there to serve Allah, 
to worship Allah, not for money materials. So therefore, I want everybody, the issue I want to buy clothes, I want to buy kereka, even I want to buy anything, leave it for, to the end of the operation. After you have done your uh, arafa, then you can go and do anything. Before the arafa, make yourself available in most. Deciding to the Holy Quran, whatever anything that you can make it closer to Almighty Allah, they have to do it. That's what I uh, all the intending pilgrims from the Osho State to do. To prepare the ground for our pilgrims from Osho State, if you see the house that the Osho pilgrims will live, very close, about 700 meters to Aram, their food, the food that they will eat, we organize the, the in fact. We need to thank our governor because he has subsidized so many things, so many things. The pilgrimage to Mecca for Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam and it's mandatory for all Muslims who can afford it and fit for the Hajj exercise. Amid Oyegbade, Trust TV News, Oshogbo. The All Progressives Congress has cleared all 12 aspirants vying for its ticket in the upcoming Edo State Governorship election. Each aspirant purchased and submitted their forms prized at 50 million naira each. The aspirants include Clem Agba, Monde Okwebolo, Loki Maswen, and Namero Dekeri, Osage Ize Iyamu, Gideon Ohine, retired Colonel David Imuse, retired General Charles Ahige, Osumbo, Blessing, Agbomere, Dennis Idahosa, and Ernest Afolabi Umahile. Campaigns are set to begin on April 24, as outlined in the APC's schedule of activities for the election. The party's national chairman, Abdullahi Ganduje, confirmed, affirmed the party's commitment to conducting free, fair, and credible governorship primaries for the aspirants. This is a news update on Trust TV coming up ahead. Fighting to survive amidst economic crisis, Funtua textile industry's fate hangs in the balance. More news when we return. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you most kindly for staying with us. But if you're just joining us, this is the Trust TV news update. Now let's take a look at a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that compensation demanded by family of men fatally shot by police stray bullet during protests in Niger states. Plus, NDLEA NAB's insurgent drug supplier seizes 7.6 tons of illicit substances. Moving on to most news. The Nigerian Navy has seized the motor tanker since SAIS NIL-2 caught with 720,000 liters of stolen crude oil sludge. The vessel flying the flag of St. Vincent and Grenadines was apprehended along with its 11 crew members. The captain's deliberate disabling of the automatic identification system raised suspicion during its journey from Lagos to Port Harcourt. Commodore Kolawole Oguntuga, commander of NNS, Beecraft emphasized the importance of AIS in monitoring vessel activities. Swift naval response led to the interception and return of the vessel to Lagos Anchorage. Samples of the onboard product have been taken for analysis to determine further action. The successful detection aligns with Vice Admiral E.I. Ogala's strategic directives emphasizing the Navy's commitment to eradicating crude oil theft and ensuring economic prosperity. As the harsh economic predicaments continue to hit harder on Nigerians, few textile industries that remain afloat may be forced to fold up if nothing is done to salvage the sector. Funtua Textile Industry is one of the few struggling to withstand the pressures despite the fact that chances of each survival are minimal, considering the realities on ground. Abdullahi Yamadi visited Funtua Textile Industry recently and has this for Trust TV News. Hi. 
The textile industries have been battling to survive the difficult business environment occasioned by fuel subsidy removal, high inflation and the ever-increasing exchange rates in the country. The chances of surviving the epileptic power supply, high cost of raw materials occasioned by uncontrolled inflation and exchange rates, as well as inconsistent government policies, are some of the factors pushing this industry to the brink. The reality is that Funtua textile industry has never for one stopped production since its establishment in 1978, pushing hard to leverage its available resources to survive. But like many other industries in Nigeria, it is currently struggling to strike a balance. The governor now is setting up a stage where the real cotton farming will be back in Kaduna State. We had a, a meeting about the last month with him and some G NGOs, and he agreed the government is ready to supply good seed. The generous should take over the enlightenment of uh, farmers so that they will stop adulterating the seed. The mill runs a variety of services comprising ginery, spinning, weaving and finishing facilities besides engaging in the production of cotton blended goods, bed sheets, pillowcases and polyester, among others. One thing that is unique about Funtua Textile Plant is its capacity of sustaining 1.2 million yards per month despite insecurity, inadequate funding, and harsh economic realities. By the end of this year, when the season starts, we are going to start seeing improvement on cotton production in Kazuna State. Though the industry was known for producing goods for exports to countries like America and other countries as well as for local consumption, it now relies heavily on local consumers for its products and services. However, in spite of all efforts to strike a balance between where it aimed to be and the current realities, the plant has 650 staff from 3,500 it used to have few years ago, but the management is reassuring that it neither have a plan to close down nor downsize its workforce, no matter the difficulty. Beyond that, Kazuna residents acknowledged the availability and affordability of textile materials from Funtua Textile, locally known as Dam Funtua, in the market, but not without some challenges. We buy it from Kano. The quality of material, uh, from two textile materials, mm. yes, the quality is good. Though at the moment, the textile industry sources its raw materials, especially cotton from Kazana, Gombe and Jigawa states, experts recommend revival of cotton boards in the country to regulate the market and at least to ensure quality control. Abdullahi Izumayamadi. Trust Television News. Away from Nigeria, Al Shabaab has claimed responsibility for an attack in Somalia that resulted in the deaths of at least five people, including Emirati troops and a Bahraini military officer. The attack targeted a training mission at the General Gordon military base in Mogadishu. Details about the attack and casualties remain limited. But Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed expressed condolences to the UAE. The UAE's Ministry of Defense confirmed the death of three of its troops and a Bahraini soldier in what they described as a terrorist act. Anwar Gargash, a senior Emirati diplomat, offered condolences and reaffirmed the commitment to combat extremism and terrorism. Al Shabaab, an Al Qaeda linked group, claimed responsibility for the attack, criticizing the UAE for its support of the Somali government. Despite previous losses of territory, Al-Shabaab continues to pose a threat, aiming to establish its inter interpretation of Islamic law in Somalia. And in sports, Super Eagles enthusiasts in Kano face a daunting task 
as the team's official jerseys vanish from the market, becoming both scarce and expensive. Daily Trust reports a surge in demand since Saturday, with jerseys now fetching as much as 15,000 naira, a sharp increase from the usual price of 5,000 naira. Reports suggest that the scarcity is artificially engineered by businessmen stockpiling jerseys in anticipation of Nigeria's victory in the finals, aiming to profit from soaring demand. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching and I'll join you again.